Hey, and welcome to a fresh episode of Platypod Perspectives. Today, we have the pleasure of joining us from the UK, Stuart Wood, who captured this amazing image. I I was blown away when I first saw this, and the way he captured these is truly amazing. It's very, it's a, it was a very dedicated process to capture this image, and we're going to jump into a little bit more detail, but with no further hesitation, I would like to introduce the photographer featured artist of the day, Stuart Wood. Thank you so much for joining us, Stuart. Thank you for having me, Larry. Great to be here. I'm very excited. <laughs> me too. Uh, so tell me just a little bit uh, about this image. It, it's it's so multi-layered and there was a lot to the process. Can you walk us through a bit of the process? How did you find the damselfly? How did you get it to sit still? How did you get that gorgeous bokeh or bokeh background with the, mm. the blurred background image? And uh, how did this all come together? So the first thing you really need to do, you need to go out in the daytime to begin with and just scout out an area where there's damselflies. Um, damselflies will typically roost at night on the edge of the pool. So if you find them flying around the pool, you know they're going to be at that pool. And secondly, you need to scout out where can you park up if you're going in a car? Can you get easy access at night? Because again, it's dark at night, so you don't want to be tripping over and breaking your leg or anything like that. Yeah. So you must scout out the area and make sure you know the area pretty well. Once you've done that, you then you need to keep an eye on the river. The river is the key to getting that shot because you want to have um, a night that is relatively cold. I think on that particular night is around seven degrees Celsius on that night. But you also need a high humidity. Uh, so you have to go into your camera app. I use the, uh, the native app that comes with my phone. And in there, it tells you where the temperature drops, where the humidity is going to hit the dew point, which is where the moisture in the air forms into dew. And that gives you the water drops that are on your uh, subject. Once you've got that time, you've got your location, you head out there with torches, you look around the side of the pool and you'll see the damselflies. They'll be just roosting. They'll be sitting mostly on a blade of grass or um, some sort of foliage. Okay. And they're just sitting there. Then the hard part comes because you've got to get them from there to your setup. So you take them off, you place them onto a setup like this, which is my platypod gear. And the hardest part is getting the damselfly onto your setup without him wiping his eyes because typically... The, they do wake up, but because yeah. it's cold, they can't move. And sometimes they'll go like this on their eyes and wipe off the dew, which is it's very annoying when they do that because okay. they want to on their eyes because it, it magnifies their compound eyes as well. Uh-huh. And so you then place your damselfly onto um, your foliage that you've got here on the clamp. And you put in a background. The background can be absolutely anything. To get the damselfly onto the twig that's on that setup, did you physically pick up the damselfly itself or did you pick up the twig no. that it was on and bring that pick over? Pick up the twig. If you pick up the damselfly, you'll knock the dew, dew off. And I it see. It's like a wet subject. <laughs> it just doesn't work like that. And um, the damselfly, although I say, you know, they don't move in the car, they are actually moving, but they're moving very, very slowly. So what's good with this setup is you can loosen your ball head and you can rotate it. So if he comes around to the front here, uh-huh. You can rotate it around so that he's always facing the camera no matter which way he is. If he comes on top, I can also lower it down. Beautiful. So, you know, the, with the setup, you've got multiple ways of being able to manipulate your subject without physically touching them, which is the aim really, is to not disturb them a, as much as possible. So, <laughs> so how how do you do the focus stacking? I've seen macro rails. I've I've seen yeah. some cameras do it. I've seen some... Uh, some photographers do it manually. So how did you yes. do the focus stacking? So let me just briefly talk about focus stacking in case anyone doesn't know. Focus stacking is a technique where you capture a series of images of your subject at different focal lengths, and then you take the sharp points or the in-focus points of those images and blend them all together to create one image that's super sharp and in focus from foreground to background. And the way you do it is it's what I call um, the success rate. It's the speed at which you can get a series of images shot before your subject moves. And there's a number of things you can do to increase your hit rate. 
and um, my OM camera, which is a um, an EM1 Mark II, which is here. Okay. As focus bracketing built in. Combine that with a good flash that has a quick recycle, you can get a lot of shots off within a certain period of time. Just because you've got the whole thing in focus doesn't mean you have to process every single image because there is something in being selective with the focusing points, which is why I chose to keep the foliage at the, the front out of focus because that's not needed to tell that particular story about yeah. the, um, the subject. And the same with the flower. You want the flower out of focus so that your, your attention drawn to the actual water drops with the flower. Yeah, that's face. amazing that it's a flower that's behind the uh, damselfly because it just looks like yeah. a gorgeous, beautiful uh, background, but you can't even tell that it's a flower. Yeah, uh, it, it worked out great. <laughs> I, I'll be honest I think, with you, I wasn't expecting it to work. <laughs> oh, I think it, it did yeah. definitely work out great. And it's going to inspire an awful lot of photographers to try this kind of thing. I want to try it. Exactly. Um, exactly. I don't know that I could find damselflies in my area, but I, I want to at least try this kind of thing, maybe with a, a little sprayer of some kind and some beads of dew. Just what to could do to practice, so to interrupt you, what you could do to yeah. practice is just go out in your backyard or find a spider web, spray it with some uh, water and then stick a flower behind it. And that will give you some good practice for when you find a subject that's willing to, to be able to do the photograph on. That's a great yeah. idea. Can you show us your setup one more time so that people can get an okay. idea of the flower so behind it? We have, um, we have two tripods. Camera is on the one tripod, of course. Okay. And then on the other tripod, I have the platypod handle. Then that goes onto a ball head where I have a super clamp, and that holds your subject, which is holding uh, the foliage, the whatever yeah. your, your subject is on. Then coming off the handle, we have an elbow with another super clamp that holds whatever you want in the background. Because again, you don't have to use a flare, you can use a, a texture card, you can use a piece of the foliage that's in the area and just put it in the background if you want to. Mm -hmm. uh, another tip I can give people if they're finding um, it difficult with a breeze because you only got to have a slight breeze and you won't be able to get a stack. Oh but yeah. If you've got two platypods, then you can set your rig up really low down to the ground inside the bushes, which is blocking the breeze from um, blowing your subject about. We have a look at this particular shot here. This shot is a twenty-eight image focused uh, stack using a manual macro lens, which is from Laura. Okay. And all you do is if you get your camera, and what you want to do is you want to set your camera to a um, high speed continuous, okay? Dial in a flash power that will keep up with your camera. Dial in the rest of your settings. So you'd want, um, at night time, your shutter speed doesn't matter because it's the flash that's lighting and Of course, yeah. Get. Find a nice aperture that's nice and sharp and then you adjust your ISO to compensate. And then all you gotta do, if I can show this, is just press that and then just move your focusing ring. Oh, that's great. That's keeping up, yeah? Yeah, so all you do, you just you, you, you set your focus to just beyond where you want your initial image to start having its focus. Turn the ring as you're doing your, like, um, your continuous burst and just keep going, just keep going. Once you're finished, return back to your um, your focus where you want it to be again and just do it again. Take more images than you think you're going to need. Well, Stuart, you have shown us some incredible things and, and a, a fascinating photograph and how you captured it. How can people find out more about you? Website, uh, Facebook, where? Easiest, easiest place to go is uh, stuartwood.com. That's S T E W. ART, stuartwood.com. And on there, I've got links to my YouTube and my social media on there. And mostly on YouTube, I've got lots of videos on how to do all this type of stuff. So if you want to get more information, just go and check out the website. Stuart, thank you so much for joining us today. Yep, thank, thank you for, for being a part. It's been great. Oh, yeah. I've learned an awful lot and I am inspired to go try some more of this stuff. And uh, that's going to be a, a fantastic experience. Well, I hope you've learned something about damselflies and weather and photographing focus stacked images from platypod perspectives. We have some of the best artists out there and they're showing how they use their gear and get the most, of course, out of platypod gear as well. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time.